According to the legends, in the year 1903-1904, the world's most powerful people gathered. Though these people were rivals and business enemies, they have one thing that united them and that's how to influence what children are taught in schools. At this time, public schooling is still a baby, less than 50 years in most countries. These guys were the richest industrialists. They had most of the money in the world right in their pocket and they needed a lot of laborers to work in their factories. Then, they decided to use what they have to get what they needed. They pretended to help the educational system by spending millions of dollars to build the system. That money in today's currency will be in multiple billions. Since who spends the money has to say, these guys influenced what the school curriculum is all about, what a child learns and how a child is being taught. The legends also have it that in one session, while the instruments of these wealthy industrialists gathered to discuss the mathematics curriculum for the schools, one of them suggested that mathematics should be designed in such a way that makes children think while the other guy stood up and said, our objective is not to train them on how to think but how to obey. Take it or leave it, the school was never designed to train you on how to think. It was designed to train you on how to obey instructions. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Whenever I talk about entrepreneurship, there's always someone to tell me not everyone can be an entrepreneur and I agree with that. Not everyone can be an entrepreneur but we teach every child to be an employee. How does that make sense to you? Most people said not everyone can be rich so don't talk as if everyone will become a millionaire. I agree with you, not everyone will become a millionaire. It's not everybody that needs to have millions of dollars. But don't forget this, everyone deserves to live a comfortable life and it takes a lot of money to do that. Except you want to go and live in my father's village, plant your foods and live under a tent. <laughs> when we say that not everyone can be an entrepreneur to defend the fact that school teaches nobody to be employees, does this make sense to anybody? This is like saying not everyone can become a soldier so don't let us teach anyone to be a soldier. When we say not everyone will become a millionaire so don't let us teach our children about money, does that make sense to anyone? To me, this is like saying not everybody can be a medical doctor so don't let us teach anyone how to be a doctor. Yes, not everybody can or will become a soldier but we need to have a good number of soldiers or our enemies will destroy us all. Yes, it's not everyone that will become a medical doctor but we need to have a good number of people who are doctors or we will all perish with minor ailments. It's not everyone that will become an entrepreneur but if we don't have enough people to build businesses, then we'll not have good jobs for those who need the jobs. School is not meant to teach you about money. I also heard another argument and that is don't complain that school doesn't teach your children about money because school is not supposed to teach about money. People who hold this view believe that school is supposed to give knowledge about science, life and jobs. That's not necessarily about money. The problem I have with people in this school of thought is that myself, like every adult who knows that money is the most important thing after oxygen. So why should I know about science if that will make me money to leave? Why should I know about trees or moon if I'll be broke? Why should I know about management or jobs for companies if I won't have money to sustain my life? Don't get me wrong, I don't mean to say that science, art or music isn't important. I mean why should anyone learn any subject in school if they won't learn about money. Isn't money the most important thing in the world after God and oxygen? So why do our dubious forefathers influence the school system to teach us how to become employees? The answer to that question is very simple. For certain people to have ungodly powers in any society, a considerable number of people in that society must be powerless. For us to have a peaceful society, for instance, we must teach people how to be obedient. For the industrialists of the 20th century, 
to have thousands of people they can use as laborers. There must be a system of indoctrination and that's what I believe they achieved with the school system we have now. The school simply teaches you, hey, your life will be great if you can work for a great company. Why doesn't school teach the opposite of that? Why don't we teach our 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds how they can build great companies? How to free yourself from the bondage of slavery When I mention slavery, I don't mean to say that the job is a slavery for everyone but I honestly believe that living inside water is slavery for birds. Birds were designed to fly, so they must fly. It doesn't matter how comfortable the river is, that's not a home for the birds. It doesn't matter how great slavery an environment is, a job is not the destiny of some people. Those people I'm talking about are the people that I pity. If you have the temperaments and values that match what it means to be an employee, then you've found your calling. If however, you don't fit into the world of a job, you have to look for ways to get out. The reason why I make this video is to show you the genesis of our problems as a people. Naturally, children who have talents for entrepreneurship should have been discovered before they become adults. These children should have been encouraged and empowered to start business ventures, even as children. Why should anyone go and study law if his passion is to build a technology company? Why should I study science if my original passion is to build an e-commerce company? But since you've been deceived to go with the crowd all your life, now I want to call you back to where you belong. Water is a great place, but that's just for a fish. Birds are meant for the sky. A good job is a nice thing, but that's for people who were made for that world. If you were wired to be an entrepreneur and you were hired for a job, your life won't be straight or smooth because you'll be like a bird trying to live in the water. If you were wired to be an entrepreneur, you were designed for the street, for the war and for the sky. Just as a bird will never be happy inside water, you can never be happy as an employee if something in you is designed for the world of entrepreneurship. So what should you do? First, know who you are and why you are unhappy as an employee. Second, know that you have the power to fly. You must know that you are where you are, not because you are dumb, but because you were deceived. Knowing this will give you some strength. You must also know that you have the feather to fly. Though you've not been trained on how to use the feather, you can learn how to use it. The reason why school taught everyone to be an employee is not because everyone should be an employee. The reason why school teaches everyone to be an employee is because if the whole world is an employee, the labor will be cheap as it is today and that was not by accident. Certain people sat down to design it that way. It's up to you to know who you are and fight for what you believe you deserve. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next but before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Now look at your screen to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.